How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. I feel like I say every week, wow, we have a lot to talk about. But we do. We always have a lot to talk about here. Grand Slam was this week in Queens. I'm rocking a Queens shirt today while we're doing this. If you're listening, you can't see me. Much like a certain wrestler that's coming back in the new year. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about Grand Slam that happened in Queens at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Also, uh, it was Dynamite and Collision that night. It was a long night. I was there, at least for some of it, I went by. Easy trip for me. Friday night, SmackDown, On the Path to Bad Blood. That's, that's shaping up to be a pretty decent pay-per-view. I mean, uh, that, that cell match is going to be something. We'll talk about it. Also, this week, the premiere of NXT on the CW Network. It's launching. They have moved NXT to CW going to be live from Chicago. CM Punk is all over that show. We'll talk about that. And of course, the big story this week, the Vince McMahon documentary on Netflix came out on Wednesday. I have seen all of it except the last episode. So we'll talk about that. I, I went through all of it and, I then, and then I watched it all over again with my wife and I did not make it to episode six. And apparently that's the one that, you know, it's the bigger of the episodes here. I want to get your thoughts on this. Give me your thoughts on the Vince McMahon doc. If you've seen it, give me your thoughts on grand slam. Give me your thoughts on what's going to happen with NXT. And of course, bad blood. You could tweet me actually X me. Can you X me? Is that the proper term? X me at Andrew Zarian. I want to hear from you guys. When we come back from break, we're going to go into all of this week's big stories. Wrestling observer live here on sports byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Yeah, last week I went to Dynamite and Collision at Arthur Ashe Stadium. They had Grand Slam there. I thought it was interesting because Tony made a comment uh, throughout the week. He's like, yeah, we're going to continue doing Grand Slam. I, I love coming back here to New York and doing Grand Slam. Uh, and I, and I, I want to ask somebody. I'm like, okay, well, what happens next year? Because you're running a pay-per-view out of Australia. And it's called Grand Slam. Do you do it twice? You know, there was a lot of changes to this year. And, and this, is a, this has been a story of AEW in 2024. They have made some big changes to the company. I, the overall structure has changed. You know, they've hired up. They've hired a lot of executives. They're, they're changing a lot of the presentation. But, you know, they were planning on running Forbidden Door in June out of Arthur Ashe Stadium. This is what I was told. Forbidden Door was moving to Arthur Ashe instead of UBS Arena. They ended up running New York anyway, but they were going to run Arthur Ashe. And instead of running Arthur Ashe Stadium or Grand Slam, they were going to run the smaller stadium that's right next to it. I mean, it, you, it's, it's hard to describe to people that have never been on that facility. It's the USTA, the United States uh, Tennis Association facility in Flushing Meadow Park. So you have, you know, smaller courts, and then you got the big stadium, Arthur Ashe Stadium, and then you got one that's 13,000, and it's Louis Armstrong. So they were going to run Louis Armstrong for this Grand Slam, and I think it would have been, I, I don't know if it was the, the logistics of bringing things in and out of that building. Uh, it is a newer building, but it's smaller. It's 13,000 people, and I think, you know, going from a 20,000-person stadium that you're putting 8,000 or so people in versus a 13,000 putting 8,000, it, it is a visual difference. I, I'm curious if it would have made a difference for the overall presentation or what the change was, but they did run Arthur Ashe Stadium for this. Dynamite was fun. I saw everybody. It was a who's who of wrestling media there. A lot of good people. It was nice. I did not stay for the whole thing. I had a work emergency, so I had to leave uh, pretty soon as I got there. I was there for only half a dynamite, but I ended up watching Collision last night. We'll talk about this now. MG, my producer, what did you think of the Soraya rules match? Essentially, the rules were Soraya could do whatever she wants, and Jamie can't. And this Jamie had won. More, this turned out to be more fun than it had any reason being, for me at least. I it mean, just was listen. Like, 
Yeah. Soraya, Soraya, we know she has had, uh, I mean, she has a serious neck issue, right? Mm -hmm. That ended her run in WWE. I mean, it, it essentially retired her. Um, oh, yeah. And she was doing a lot in this match, or at least trying to do a lot. I mean, she was bumping like crazy. Yeah, she she did. And uh, I, I for her, I'm I'm happy that they're kind of adding her back in because she was I, I was like they made such a big. Remember two years ago at Grand Slam, she debuted and everybody was like, oh wow. Yeah. And then she just kind of went away. Mm. It's so, hard. I mean, you know, you, you, yeah. I, I believe her, the story was that she was getting checked out before and after every match, right? That was the story. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, they, I, went, and, I'm, and I'm, they were limiting her. Mm. Yeah. I'm curious if they're still doing that. Um, you know, but this did turn out better than a lot of people expected. Uh, the story here is Jamie. They're building Jamie Hader up. And rightfully so. You know, she was really hot when she got hurt and she left last year. And, you know, it was a long recovery. And now she's back, and they're presenting her in a really strong way. I think this was a positive for Jamie. Uh, Soraya, you know, she did a lot in this match. Uh, there was a big spot where um, Harley Cameron came to, I guess, suplex Jamie Hayter through the table, and it, came, it looked really scary, <laughs> the way that everybody landed there. There were toy cars all over that table, too. Did you notice that, MJ? Those cast cars, like the die cast. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the die cast cars. We got a Tornado Trios match. The Learning Tree, Bill, Big Bill, Brian Keith, and Chris Jericho defeated the conglomeration, Kyle O'Reilly, Mark Briscoe, and Orange Cassidy. I don't know why I was about to say O.J. Simpson. I My brain, for whatever um, no. reason, <laughs> saw Orange, and I thought O.J. Simpson. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly, Mark Briscoe, and it was not O.J. Simpson. It was Orange Cassidy. Uh, this this really looks like they're building a program between Jericho and Mark Briscoe. Uh, is this going to be for the title? Yeah, he already held the ROH title. I don't want to see he Jericho did. the ROH title again. You don't want to see it again? Mm. Why? Because, <laughs> man, put that on somebody else. Put that on somebody I new. See... <laughs> you Dude, don't want to see Chris Jericho's ring of honor for champion. Briscoe. No, it's perfect. Briscoe, okay, but... I mean, he's been in ring of honor. It just kind of makes sense that he's the champion there. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I, it's fine. I, that'll be a fun program. I'm fine with that. I, I know a lot of people are turned off by Jericho. I don't have that turn off as much as people have it. I, you know, listen, he's a veteran. He's obviously in his mid fifties. He's not moving the same he way, but he's doing. Yeah, he keeps doing stuff. I mean, he's he reinvents himself and he comes up with different characters. It's fine. Yeah, but it's just not always for me. I, I like I, new characters. My my big concern is with Big Bill. You know, you don't have too many guys yes. that look like him and, uh, you know, have the presence that he does. You know, I'm also, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm biased towards Big Bill. Why? Because he's from Queens. He's from my neighborhood. He was a big basketball star here. People know him around here. So I obviously, I want to see him do well. But also, it's the hard work this guy's put in over the last five years. He's been sober for five years, changed his entire life. He looks tremendous. Just, he needs that singles opportunity. He, he, I, I, you know, maybe, maybe there's a disconnect there. Maybe they've attempted it and there's something going on. I don't know. But I'd like to see, and Brian Keith is also great. I like Brian Keith a lot. So I, I'm hoping that this elevates those two, working with Jericho. You also got Brody King defeating Action Andretti. This was, this was interesting. a fun little match. Yeah, yeah. that was a fun mm -hmm. little match. But this was, I want to talk about the next one here. <laughs> so this actually, a little behind the curtain, this opened up the show. When, you, when we were at uh, Grand Slam, this was one of the first matches they put on before Dynamite went live. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. And the building was pretty empty at that time. When this match was happening, uh, they heard Jack Perry's music. Jack Perry came out. This was the open challenge, right? And yes. Minoru Suzuki's music hit, and you saw grown, grown men running <laughs> to, <laughs> to be there for his entrance. That's funny. Yeah, Jack Perry defeated Minoru Suzuki by count out uh, after Shibata came in to make the save for Suzuki. So it looks like it's going to be Jack Perry and Shibata for the TNT title next. Uh, this was fine. You know, it was kind of hard because they were on the outside. They were on the inside. There was a lot of moving parts here. It definitely looked better on TV 
than it did in the building at the moment that this match went on because it was very desolate. That one building. thing I, one thing I noticed is, in. is during uh, Suzuki's entrance, uh, the music, usually they, people are screaming uh, that uh, music of top their lungs. Yeah. I could barely hear it. So well, I was like, it, it didn't it, sound a couple like reasons. It couple reasons yeah. it's it's a very it's a very high roof right it's a dome right it's a soft uh domed mm. top or is it soft i i believe it's soft yes no i mean yeah mm. it is soft mm. um so i i think the way that the the sound bounces in that building is strange and also there was nobody there there was nobody there i would say half of the audience that that was there for dynamite was not there for this mm-hmm so I think they wanted to they wanted a big you know welcome match, but it didn't it, it didn't come off like that and it took a little while. But also listen, and then the opening match after this, you know, for for the show when the show went live was Danielson. So it it, it kind of got everybody pumped in the building, but I don't think it did the job for this Minoru Suzuki match. Uh, we I want to talk a little bit more about this. I was hoping to talk about it for one segment, but we're not going to do that. We're going to talk about this into the next segment also, uh, because the Outrunners, I, I want to take some time and talk about them. When we come back, collision and everything else happening in the world of professional wrestling. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. I want to go right into this. The Outrunners were at Coney Island. You know, there's... Is it, is it, and I'm going to, and I'm asking the audience this, right? I'm so tickled by these guys. I love an over the top 1980s gimmick. Okay. Wrestling gimmick. I, I don't know why it, it feels warm to me. I want outrageous characters screaming at me and wearing really bright colors. That's what I want in wrestling. Uh, the Outrunners were at Coney Island. They did this. It was it was cool to see the video. We also got a three-way Lucha Libre match. Hologram defeated the Beast Mortos and Jarlistico. They brought up the similarities of WCW's first hour with the with the um, with the Luchas on Collision. Uh, you know what was funny? I I you know Lucha Libre is. Very different than American style, obviously. And this is obviously a hybrid, right? Because you're catering to an American audience. But they did a lucha match here, right, MJ? Absolutely. I mentioned this, I think, a couple weeks ago that I felt like this is where they were, why they were doing these matches on this show. It, it kind of the same vein as WCW Nitro. And all of a sudden, and then, and then for them to kind of uh, mention it, I think it was Daddy Magic said, told Tony, I was like, you remember these matches back in the day or something? And I goes, well, that's interesting. Yeah. And yeah. I, I like, I, I like these matches and you can run these back and they can fill it. Fill yeah, they're great. I love it. Uh, I, I think Mordos is fantastic. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, you know, yeah. hologram. I, I'm, I'm still, I, I'm, I know that the focus is on hologram here. They're trying to build them, but Mordos is something very special here. Um, I did find it comical going on social media last night and seeing the complaints about, oh my gosh, this match is so flippy and so choreographed. Mm -hmm. And all I could think of was, do you, have you never, have you ever, have you never, ever, have I ever seen a Lucha Libre match? The whole thing <laughs> is arm drags and flips. So I, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I found the commentary. This was fun. Really fun match. I love this stuff, mm -hmm. you know? MXM Collection Fashion Show. I did not love this, oh, and I like those guys a I, lot. But I I, 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 I thought it was terrible, to be honest. Yeah, with you. I did not yeah. like this, and and it hurts me to say because I like I like both those dudes. Uh, they had a bunch of models come out. Uh, they <laughs> had Max Casters. They had a model right and wearing the caster jacket, and what, he had a hood on. His head was covered, <laughs> yeah. right? You couldn't see who it was. <laughs> Yes. And they touched but, it up. But what he, did they do? They, they cut a heart in the front. Yes. And, one, and once I noticed uh, the physique, I goes, that's Billy Gunn. <laughs> that's so Billy Gunn. This monster that was jacked. It turned out to be Billy Gunn. It spoiled the heels. All right. It, it was uh, not good. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I did not enjoy it. And I, was, and I liked a lot of this hokey stuff, you know, like I'm into it sometimes. This was I was not into. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the Lumberjack strap match. 
Hangman Page defeated Jeff Jarrett. What did you think of the match? I thought Jeff Jarrett looked really good in this. Yeah, he. This was everything it needed to be. Uh, I, it, just the way they were doing it. The the one thing for me that really stood out in this whole thing was Juice Robinson on the outside. Uh, first did of you all, see the he, outfit. Yeah, he he dressed up like a lumberjack <laughs> with his short shorts and suspenders. No, well, he had the suspenders t- uh, tied into his tights. His yeah, wrestling yeah, yeah. Tights. So he's wearing. I go. That is the most bizarre look, but it works for him because he's just so over the top. Yeah. But well, the story like here, going... you know, yeah. Hangman. Mm-hmm. Hangman is a stud right now. They've mm-hmm. y- they were able to, and I got to tell you, the Swerve storyline really brought Hangman back. Uh, you, you could tell that this is a very different presentation for him. He's so much more... I mean, he's always been, I mean, a, a, a hard-hitting psychopath in the ring. Um, I, I, do, I do think that the CM Punk problem did slow him down a little, and it may have disenfranchised him a little. This is... But he's back now, and it's great. And it looks oh, yeah. like it's going to be him and Juice Robinson for the next program. Maybe that's the pay-per-view match. Oh. So good. I, I like Juice Robinson a lot. I'm glad they're getting him back involved yeah. again. Listen, I, when, is, when is Jay White returning? That's a good question. I do not know that. I know he had a pretty bad injury. so I, I don't know what his state of recovery is, but I, I think going you know after this, if he's available, if that's what they're going to go, go right into uh, Jay White and Hangman. I mean, that's a... Oh, yeah, that could be a great feud, too. Maybe he'll be ready for the Australia show. Maybe that's a build. Interesting, yeah. You know? Mm. Uh, so after the match, he choked out Robinson. Also, AEW con- Continental Contender match. Continental title Eliminate. eliminator match. There you go. <laughs> Okada defeated Sammy Guevara. So that I like this match, know. too. Uh, too. Uh, and Sammy, Sammy looked really good in this, so um, good for him. Yeah, yeah. So that was, uh, that was that. SmackDown also. Let's go into this. Uh, you know, this is on USA now. And the numbers are not going to be the same, but they did put on a pretty good show here, man. Uh, Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, Bloodline segment opened it up. Kevin Owens and Randy Orton both question why Cody would even team with Roman Reigns. So this is the big moment here. And I don't know if this is a Kevin Owens turn. I don't know if they're just going to continue him questioning Cody. You know, that that is interesting to me that that's that's where they're headed here. Bailey defeated Naomi to become the number one contender for the WWE Women's Championship. Before the match, Nia was shown backstage upset with Tiffany Stratton and choking and choked her out. Like literally grabbed her by the throat. I go, yeah, okay, like, like, some, like grabbed some, her. Some people are not going to like that at all. <laughs> it became a meme online. Yeah. She mm-hmm. said that the thing, uh, things would get really bad for her if she lost the title. So I don't, I guess maybe that's where they're headed here. And then, and then they showed Tiffany uh, very upset when she walked away. So I think we're going to get a cash-in sooner than later, which th- I, I hope so. Cause oh, that would be great. I'm Ajax fan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Carmelo Hayes defeated Andrade. The series is now tied. This was another banger of a match. They have had six matches, and every single one of them has been really good. Um, and a little bit different. And they're changing and a little different. it up each Here's time. Here's a question for you. Mm-hmm. Who's been benefiting more from these matches, Andrade or Carmelo? I think you could say equally. Um, they're establishing Carmelo more because Andrade's been around for a while. Carmelo's still fairly new to a lot of people. So I think yeah. just for that, just to answer that question, uh, pick one, I would say Carmelo. Yeah, I think Carmelo's been looking at excellent here. Uh, he's such a tremendous talent. And, you know, to be in a ring with a guy like Andrade on your first major, re- you know, major program like this, like long term. Uh, is a positive. So I guess maybe this will be the pay-per-view match, you know, the final one. And then yeah, we go from there. That, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you know, last week he had that he had that great match with LA Knight too, and then that wacky ending where they were like trying to shake hands and he gave him a fist pump and he raised his hand. I, I still don't understand what happened there. I missed a part of this match, but I think LA Knight came out at the end of this one too. Yeah. Mm. So after all a week of speculating where's aj styles where has he been been he has not been on tv i guess wwe noticed that people are questioning it and there was a vignette for him he'll be back next week on smackdown 
-hmm. His contract ends sometime soon. Possibly 20, I think early like 2025, and he's not re-signed yet, so... Is he going to retire? Yeah, but we've seen those kind of we've seen those kind of come down to the last minute. Yeah, I've noticed a lot. It, so, so I it, when I hear that stuff, I go eh, until I until I hear. Ah, me too. He's gone me too. Like I, <laughs> you know, maybe he just wanted some time off. Like, he is forty seven years old. Yeah, and he does perform at a very high level uh, when it comes to wrestling. I mean, he he's not doing half the stuff that he was doing in TNA, obviously, but. He's still performing at an extremely high level. It just shows you how great he was in his prime. You know? Think, I, I'm curious where, the, where he goes with this. Bloodline defeated Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. This was Solo and Jacob Fatu. There was a fun moment here. Uh, actually, before the match, KO told Cody not to come out there. Orton told Cody if it broke down, it was four on one, he could come out. Cody did end up coming out, taking out the Tongans, but Jacob Fatu would throw him in the ring. Uh, that would end up costing Kevin Owens the match. Who is Tony, by the way? You wrote Tony came out. I'm assuming you meant Cody. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and then Tony Khan showed up on SmackDown and came, went into the ring and he took out the Tongans. Can you believe that? Uh, there was an interesting spot here where Orton went to uh, drop Fatu on the table and it didn't break and he no sold it and he did it again and again did and again. again. Yeah. And that table like would not times. break. <laughs> Even with solo on it, it barely broke. It uh, always it always amazes me with those monitors. Because those monitors are broken. They're they gotta be cutting up your back when you go into them. Just that every time I see that, I go, I cringe. Better than those old ones. Remember, I don't know if Vince bought out a factory of those square <laughs> those <laughs> monitors that they used mm. for like 20 years. They, those and, square and they monitors. Use, they used long after they should have. They've already should have retired them. Yeah. I mean, for a while. Remember Rusev, them, but... remember Rusev carrying one around going, I'm new TV champion. <laughs> that was, was that during, was that during Vince McMahon's heel United Nations? The, what did it, was it yes. called the United Nations? Yep. It was called yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the League of, League of, Na League of League Nations. Nations? Was that Reigns. it? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and he, so in and 2016, that was, that's they were still using those it. monitors. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, that was SmackDown. It was a good SmackDown. When we come back, we have a lot of news to talk about. I want to talk about Bad Blood. I want to talk about CW. I want to talk about uh, uh, this, this WBD update, what Swerve said, the Vince McMahon doc. We have a lot to get to in our next segment here. Also, SummerSlam coming back to not New York, New Jersey, MetLife Stadium. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Next week, WWE Blood, Bad Blood, not Bloodline. WWE Bloodline. You know what? They, sh they could do that. Remember they ran DX at their own pay-per-view name? Rock got his own show. Why not call it Bloodline? <laughs> WWE Bad Blood is Sunday, October 5th, 6 p.m. on Peacock. You got a Hell in a Cell match. CM Punk, Drew McIntyre. Looking forward to this. Roman Reigns and Cody versus Solo and Jacob Fatu. I'm curious what happens here. Who it feels like the setup for uh yeah it feels like the setup for war games right that this that is, is the setup yeah leading down yeah. that road yep WWE Women's World Champion Liv Morgan defends against Rhea Ripley WWE Women's the Champion here. yeah the big it, part here is oh, the, cage, yeah, Dominic, the shark cage <laughs> Dominic suspended over the shark cage over the ring in the shark cage over the ring you got WWE I love Women's how he Champion sells. Nia Jax defending <laughs> against Bailey Damian Priest against Finn Balor. And t women's tag titles on the line. Uh, they're hosting, I'm sorry. Women's tag champions Bianca Belair and Jade Cargo will be the host of Bad Blood. That was announced last night. Would you like to add something, MG? No, I just said I, I loved on the, the Liv and Rhea match. Dominic being so over the top with having been in prison. Where he's still going, I can't go back. I can't go back. That's so good. It's like, you are so over the top. It's yeah. so dumb, but yet it's so funny. <laughs> WWE NXT will be on CW. Uh, big changes to the look. I don't know what that means, how they're going to change the look, because they're not running live from different places every week. 
So that we know, know of. I, that we know of. I know yeah. the first two, right? The but, first two, yeah. yeah. And listen, I think that's fine. Like they could. I don't understand why they wouldn't film, you know, two weeks worth of TV at these shows. I think that would be great. I mean, listen, you're in Chicago, right? You're in Chicago. You have 6,000, I don't know how many people, 6,000 people in that building, right? I know Russell Tix probably has it out there. You want, you want to visually show a really strong show. Why not, why not do two weeks there and then you do the next, you know, the next taping in St. Louis. They moved it to a smaller building, but uh, we'll see. I'm curious what the big changes are. The, this is the uh, the women's title is going to kick off the CW premiere. You also have Ethan Page defending against Trick Williams with C, uh, CM Punk as a special guest referee. Yeah, Wesley and Zachary Wentz uh, in a street fight. Uh, you have uh, Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair on the show. Yeah, Miz hosting uh, Miz TV with Oba Femi and Tony D'Angelo. You have Jada Parker and Lola Vice uh, versus two members of Fatal Influence, and you have uh, like we said. The Roxanne Perez defending against Julia to open the show. And now cool and now stuff. we know that who's waiting at the other end of that mm -hmm. because Stephanie Vickera showed up at the end yeah. of NXT this last week. So WWE also announced two nights SummerSlam is headed to New Jersey in 2025. MetLife Stadium is getting SummerSlam August 2nd and 3rd. This is the first time they have run that stadium. And they have not built it as New York. They build it as New Jersey. So I'm willing to bet that New York did not want to pay for SummerSlam. And New Jersey <laughs> did. And, and people forget. Giant, the New York Giants and the New Jersey and the, see, and the New Jersey Jets. Well, it should be the New, the New York Jets yeah. <laughs> and the New York Jets do not play in New York. They play at the metal, in the Meadowlands in New Jersey. And I have to tell you, it is not an easy place to get to <laughs> from. I have no I, I and this is my big problem with football here. I can't connect because I can't go like I'm not going to. Do you know what a travel nightmare that is? We had for to, someone from session. New York. It's like, yeah, it's like a three hour round trip, right? It's mm. terrible. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Mm. So maybe I'll go. Maybe I won't. I don't know. We'll see. There's also an update on WBD's situation with AEW. So this was interesting. A couple of weeks ago, we broke the story that Fox was in play to forget to, to get a, a show from AEW. That was, there was interest in there. They held meetings. I had spoken to someone there, and they, they kind of uh, interestingly kind of between the lines told me that, you know, there was a lot of ad in inventory. We worked really hard to sell these ads, to convince advertisers to advertise on professional wrestling. And now you there is... Uh, a, a thirst, a hunger for it, this. It would be a shame to let it go to waste. Swerve was was off. I don't know if he was off the record. I don't know if he knew he was being recorded here for a YouTube video. And in the video, he's speaking to somebody. My apologies. I have no idea who he was speaking to. And he essentially says, like, yeah, um, we're on we're on TNT, we're on TBS. We're, you know, we're on Max or whatever he said, and and we're gonna be we're gonna be on Fox because the Fox SmackDown is no longer on Fox, so we're going to Fox. You heard that clip, right, MG? Uh, I haven't heard it. I'm looking it up now. the The name of the YouTuber is Queens with a Z Flip. Um, Queens YouTube Flip is he fan. from Queens? Mm -hmm. No, I don't even know if it's a. I don't even know if it's a, a guy. It might be a girl. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just first time, just first time hearing of it. But okay, yeah. So mm. I mean, listen, I don't know. Uh, what somebody messaged me and he was like, uh, "You think he's working, or you think he's he's off the record having a conversation?" I'm like, I don't know. You know, sounded like he was having a conversation just based on this verbiage of what I'm reading here. Yeah, it sounded yeah. like he was having a conversation, and and I listened to it and. You know, maybe that's the 90% or whatever, 98% that deal was done. That's how it was presented to me that the WBD side was completed and it was whatever else he was going to do with another network partner was still being worked on. Uh, I, I, I will tell you that Rampage is not on for the schedule. So I don't know if you're going to move Rampage and give them another show. I, I have no idea how this would work with Fox. I have no idea what night they would put him on. 
and what time slot they would put him on. Uh, you have college football there. You have, uh, I mean, their schedule is busy. And not to mention if uh, the rumor of uh, SmackDown going to three hours, that just kills that, that 10 o'clock Friday. And SmackDown going to three hours. Well, and then also, are we still talking Fox? Or are we talking... Yeah, somewhere when else. I, yeah. The way that it was described to me, it was always said as Fox. Okay, it was always said Fox, but I speak to people at WBD all the time, and they still there are certain people that still call the company Turner. Hmm. So I don't know if it's a verbiage thing. Like, and and I spoke to somebody that you know, um, I, I was a very legitimate journalist, non wrestling journalist, reached out to me about this. From the TV side. And that was exactly what I said to them. I, 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 the word was Fox, but I, I have no way, you know, and this person was not going to disclose more. So, very interesting stuff. Uh, we'll find out, I mean, soon. The Orion report said any week now, and that's what I've been told regularly, that any week now, uh, things have been prepared. PR is prepared. Marketing is prepared. They just need to get the green light for whatever reason and fire ahead. Vince McMahon documentary dropped on Wednesday. I want to take a couple minutes with this. So I went into it with an open mind with zero expectation. I had zero expectation of being a fluff piece. I had zero expectation of it being a hatchet job as many people said that this would be. I, this was not a hatchet job at all. Uh, this was not a fluff piece either. I just got a message so funny while we're recording this. My buddy that is not a hardcore wrestling fan, okay? A very casual fan. Watched in during the Attitude Era. Watches currently, but not, not committed and obsessively consuming. This is what he said to me. The last 30 minutes of episode 6 is all anybody needs to watch. I give the entire series a 4 out of 10. You know? I think that's pretty fair. <laughs> I did not... I was not blown away by much. I mean, there were certain moments. Obviously, Shane McMahon's relationship with his father said a lot. Um... He came off, you know, between everybody on that documentary, Shane McMahon came off the best, and our very own Dave Meltzer was the voice of reason there. He came he off kind of came tremendous. in between the two, right? He's kind of like the way they the way they uh, edited it. It looked like he was kind of medi mediating between the two. <laughs> he he really came off really good. Like actually, in a world of crazies, he came off to be the the only sane person with a sane uh, outlook on this. Everybody else was, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I just, that was, that was one, right? The Shane relationship was one. I have yet to see episode six, okay? I haven't either. So. I haven't, mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you why. I, I watched up to five. I watched all of five. I, my wife wanted to rewatch it. She was like, it's so much wrestling. It's, I want more of, of the person, right? I want more, like episode two, was a was a pretty good episode. Also, the the Vince comment about um you know, he slept with, he had an affair, right? That's what he claimed. Mm -hmm. With uh is a referee uh, Rita with the Chatterton? referee. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, okay. would read a chatter. Yeah. I, I I always remember him denying any kind of relationship. Yeah, but now he's it, trying to get in front of anything. Well, he, down, now he's so. trying to get in front. And, and okay, fine, right? And, and I, again, I can't think like that man. I don't know why he would do or say whatever he said. But he said it was a consensual affair. And then he could have left it there, but he didn't. And the answer, he followed it up with, well, even if it wasn't consensual, the yeah. statute of limitations has expired. That was interesting. I, for that's... Sure. That's a crazy thing to say. There weren't a lot of those, though. You didn't get a lot of that. Again, maybe episode six is different, but I'm speaking about the first five episodes. It was all the stories that you've heard about Vince McMahon. It was, uh, you know, the line is blurred. You don't know. 
uh, he only tells you what what you he wants you to see. Everything he does is so strategic. You know, again, this mm-hmm. the it. I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna outside of seeing episode six, I'm gonna say something that maybe come off a little. It did exactly what Vince McMahon's team has said uh, about his defense that. It 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 it, it reiterated that where you don't know when he's in character and where he's the real person. Nobody really knows. So your idea of this man is not correct because he's such a he's such a a, a tremendous actor, <laughs> and he has this ability yeah. to go in and out of. And I'm like, well, I, we wanted the person. We don't want the wrestling character. We want to know more about the person and. Again, this is not a man that's willing to tell you who he is. So you only got glimpses and you got bits and pieces. I don't know. To me, the first five episodes, there w- it wasn't this damning piece. And it also wasn't this fluff piece. It was, yeah, he's, he's not a great guy, but he's done some really good things. Is that, can we, can we, I mean, that's really what, it, what they were telling you. Uh, I... It wasn't Vince McMahon. It was his company. I, I didn't really learn much. But I'm curious what a casual fan would think. Going to a quick break. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. Yeah, I got a couple comments here. You really didn't like the documentary? Didn't learn anything from it? I learned a lot. I mean, listen, I, I'm sure if you're a casual person and you turn this on, right? I, I like my wife is a casual fan, not even. She's casual by being in the same room and seeing wrestling on 24 seven. And she said, I want to know more about him. I don't really want to know about WrestleMania and the story of 70, you know, eight, 90, nine, 900,000 people showed up at WrestleMania three and Andre I, you know, Hogan didn't know if Andre, I mean, that's such a hokey wrestling thing to put in. They also said they had a hundred hours worth of interviews. Where's the rest? There's nothing else that was a little bit more sensational. Something that we haven't heard. I don't know. I, 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 it was shot beautifully. It was produced one, like amazing. But we learned we will never know who that man is. This was it. This is the fun. I don't, he'll never do this again. You'll never get a book for his life. He also attempted to buy this thing. Not an accurate one, at least. We will never get an accurate story of who that man is. At least when he's alive. While he's alive. I, I don't know if we'll ever find out. But uh, fascinating. Fascinating stuff. Next week, obviously, we have a pay-per-view. Bad Blood. We're going to recap that on Sunday. And everything else that happened in the world of professional wrestling. Guys, give me a follow on X at Andrew Zarian. Also, Tuesdays, Beyond the Bell with me and Rich Dambolian. Fridays, Mattman Podcast with Rich and myself. And Tuesdays, also, Here on the Wrestling Observer with Garrett Gonzalez, I'll be here. Wrestling Observer Live, everybody. See you next time.